uh, a lot of hassle, but finally we got started. <laughs> so, yeah. First of all, this is joint work with uh, Ringi, who's right here, and uh, Sasha Kostochka, my PhD advisor, Boran Park at Aju University, and uh, Doug West, who's also a professor at University of Illinois. So today I'll be talking about uh, largest two regular subgraphs in a given three regular graph. And this result is one of those things where it's very easy after you know the correct induction and after you know the correct avenue to approach the problem. But it took us quite a while to find the proof, which means I won't the proof will only take maybe like five to ten minutes to explain. I won't go into all the details. So rather than focusing on the result and trying to explain every single detail, I thought I would just give a general survey of uh, regular subgraphs, factors, and factorizations of graphs in just a big survey in uh, structural graph theory. Okay. So I'll start with the basic definition. Uh, we say a graph is R regular if every vertex has degree R. So, yeah. And then, given some host graph, we say this graph has a k factor if it contains some R regular subgraph. So, okay, yeah. And then we also say a graph is k factorable if its edge set can be partitioned into these uh, k factors. Right. So, having, so if your graph is k factorable, of course, naturally, you can partition it, the edge set into k factors, which means you already have at least one k factor. So in this talk, uh, I'll always, almost always have the blue color mean the host graph you're considering, and I'll always have the red letters mean uh, the object you're looking for. So either it's going to be, mostly it will be a k regular subgraph for some integer k. So the very first result, or not the first result, but the first result you learn in this area in your undergrad graph theory course is probably this result by uh, Koenig, which says that if you are given a bipartite graph with uh, two parts A and B, then you can always find a one factor if and only if uh, for all of the sub subsets of one part, this condition is satisfied. And this condition is also known as a Hall's condition because coincidentally Hall also f found it in his 1935 paper, which uh, doesn't seem to exist when I tried to do the literature search. So if you have this paper, uh, please send it to me. <laughs> but it's not on MassSciNet, or it's, it's like a mystery paper where it's, it's in the references, but I can't really find it. But I can find this paper by Koenig, but unfortunately it's in German, so I can't read it because my German is almost non-existent. Okay. Maybe if the size of A is equal to size of B. Uh, you only, it's a bipartite graph, so n no assumption about regularity, and you're only considering saturating one part. Right? So, but then one, it's not one factor, then it's a matching. Oh, yeah, so, oh, yeah, okay. So this is, a, <laughs> this is a typo or a bad red letters here. Okay. Right. okay. So yeah. So the first result in this area is always this uh, Hall's condition, where you're guaranteed to saturate one part of a bipartite graph. And then, of course, after you learn this, you use this result to uh, you use this result because this is an obvious necessary condition. Right? Because if you want to saturate one part of A, right? if you have A on the left, then if you want to saturate all of these vertices, then if you look at its neighborhood, you have to have at least that many vertices in the neighborhood because otherwise you don't have enough vertices to saturate this one part. And at Illinois, we learned this as Tonkus, which means the obvious necessary condition is also sufficient because it's obvious that this condition is necessary, but the real hammer of Hall's theorem is uh, the proof that it's also sufficient. And this theme follows on later when I go into uh, k factors and f factors and gf factors, right? You're always trying to find some necessary and sufficient condition that guarantees that you have some structure in, in your graph. Okay. So after this Hall's theorem, of course you use this to prove an earlier theorem, which is easier. Right? So here, 
uh, this result by Koenig, the same Koenig here, says that if you're bipartite and if you're also regular, then you're indeed one factorable, which means that you can partition your edge set into the, sufficient, the appropriate number of uh, perfect matchings. So you, you have a regular bipartite graph, you can ex extract the one factor, the remaining graph is still bipartite and still regular, and you can just keep going until the graph is empty. And the proof of this theorem is uh, very simple. It's just this one-liner, just using this uh, Hall's theorem. You just, for any S that you grab to be a subset of A, right, you know it has exactly R times the size of S number of edges. But then the number of cross edges between here is bounded above by the number of vertices in your neighborhood times the size of R, because there might be more edges going from the neighborhood to uh, this other side. And here you don't need the condition that the size of A is, is, is equal to the size of B because that follows naturally because your graph is uh, regular. Right. Okay. So after this, right, so the first thing is there's a Tonka's condition of one factors of bipartite graphs, a sufficient and necessary condition. And then you prove some nice result that says a specific class of graphs has this one factor. Well, in, in this case, you prove something stronger. You prove it has a one factorization. And then after this uh, sufficient and necessary condition, there's a quantification, right? It says if you're bipartite, then you have a one regular subgraph, and the order of this subgraph is exactly this number, where this number is the maximum of the difference of S and the, neighbor, the size of your neighborhood. And this can be viewed as some deficiency, con some, some defect, right? Because in your Koenig and Hall condition, it says that the size of your neighborhood must be at least the size of yourself. But if you don't have a one factor, that means there exists some subset S such that you yourself is bigger than your neighborhood, right? And you can measure how much far away you are from this uh, Koenig and Hall condition by just subtracting uh, the neighborhood of S from your S. Right? So here, this quantification, or this quantity here, just means that you take a subset of A that has the maximum deficiency. Right? You take the worst S, and you just measure the deficiency of this function, and you just subtract that. Right? So this is the amount of vertices you're missing from this one regular subgraph. And this will be the theme of uh, today's talk, right? Uh, once you go into structural graph theory, you say, okay, there's some structure, some nice structure uh, that you want to find. So the first thing you do is you want to find some necessary condition. And then you find some sufficient condition. And then you put in some effort to try to make those conditions equal. And then after you do this, you go into this uh, quantification, right? You, ha you want to see how large of this structure you can have. And usually, uh, these quantities are somewhat parallel. Right? Here, you have this uh, necessary sufficient condition. And here, in the quantification uh, of the size of the, of the order of the one regular subgraph, right? the quantification follows from the, from the Tonkis condition as well. Right? Okay. So after you go into this uh, theorem of bipartite graphs, the next thing you do is you figure about bipartite graphs and you try to prove uh, this thing for all graphs, right? So in general, if you're given some graph, uh, Tut found a necessarily a necessary and sufficient condition for this graph to have a one factor. And it, here in the first uh, slide, you say this subset has to be part of A and you are measuring uh, the size of the neighborhood and yourself. But here in the general uh, one-factor theorem by Tut, you're measuring the size of yourself and the, si and the number of odd components you have once yourself is removed from the graph. Right? Right. So in the picture, it looks like this. Right? You have your graph, and you're considering uh, any subset of your vertex set. And once you remove this set S, of course, you'll have some even components and odd components. And if your graph wants to have a one-factor, then of course, these odd components can't match uh, themselves, right? Only the even components has 
only the even components have the possibility of having a perfect matching. So this odd components ha must have an edge from itself and from, from itself to uh, this subset of size s, right? So here it's also somewhat easy to see that this condition is also a necessary condition. And Tut's theorem basically says that this theorem is also sufficient. Right? So this is also a Tonkas condition. So as in the first slide, as uh, after Koenig and Hall proved their theorem, Peterson actually used, well, he didn't use this theorem because it was proven in, in 1891. Right? I actually tried to uh, understand this paper, but again, my German is very bad, so I can't understand this. But there's a very easy proof after adapting uh, Tut's result that he actually proved that a three regular graph where all the cut edges are on a path then your cubic graph, your three regular graph, has a one factor. Right. So in particular, it says if your three regular graph has no cut edges, if it's namely two edge connected, then it has a one factor. And of course, after this uh, necessary, sorry? Uh, if you have all the cut edges, then there's a path where all the cut edges lie on this path. So his, his theorem actually proved uh, some stronger result. Right? Right. Yes. You cut the edges, you mean you take an edge cut? Whenever you take an edge cut? I, I don't know. Cut edges are okay. the edges that... If you remove this edge, the graph becomes disconnected. This is a cut edge. So, so your any, graph... So for any edge cut set... No, it's not about yeah. some set, but single edges. Single edges Each cut edge cut is a cut edge, yes. and you look at all the cut edges, if they all lie on a path, then it has a one factor. Okay. <laughs> okay. So after the necessary sufficient condition, there's some nice class of graphs where you can figure out if the class has a one factor or not. And then there's this uh, result which is usually attributed to Burge, but usually nowadays it's called uh, the Burge Tut theorem, where it says if you're a graph on n vertices, then it's similar to this, uh, this ORE condition, where it says you can actually measure uh, the maximum size of your one regular subgraph right, by just looking at the deficiency. Right? It says if your graph satisfies this uh, Tut condition, namely the size of yourself is at least as big as the number of odd components when you're removed, then yeah, yeah. if every such, if, if every vertex subset satisfies this condition, then you have a one factor. But if every subset does not satisfy this, or if there exists a subset where this condition is not satisfied, then you can measure how much this condition is not satisfied, and this will be considered your uh, defect. Right? So you take the subset that satisfies the maximum defect, and you just remove this from the number of vertices. So this is also a quantification of how big your one regular subgraph is. And then there are more generalizations, which I'll try to briefly introduce now. Uh, there's this... Uh, so of course, after you do one factors, you want to do k factors, right? You want to look at some substructures where every vertex has a degree exactly k. And, of and the same Tut uh, improved his own result. Of course, uh, some other person independently proved this. But he improved this result to say he found a necessary and sufficient condition for your graph to have a k-factor. Right? But now, instead of looking at only one vertex subsets, you're looking at pairs of vertex subsets where this pair are disjoint. And it says, your graph has a k-factor if and only if uh, this condition is satisfied, where this function here, q, counts uh, the number of components, where after you remove this s and t, some quantity is odd. Right? And what this is saying in the picture is that if you choose any s and t where s and t are disjoint, if you remove this, of course you have some even components and odd components, just like uh, Tut's one-factor theorem. But he's saying you don't really care about the even components 
where even components doesn't necessarily mean the order of this component, but now you're looking at this quantity, where it's the, the component size times k plus the number of edges between t and c. Right? So after you look at this, this is also a necessary and sufficient condition, and this is maybe not so obvious, right? Because uh, proving sufficiency of this theorem takes like a page and a half. But what's important here is that there is still a necessary and sufficient condition where it's theoretically possible to say your graph does not contain a k factor and I can blame these two uh, disjoint subsets S and T because they don't satisfy uh, this magenta colored uh, condition. Right. Okay. So tut yeah. So the story goes from bipartite to one factor in general graphs and then k factor to general graphs. But then, of course, mathematicians don't stop here. They go even further, and they define this thing called an f factor down here, which basically says so a k factor. So a k factor means that every vertex must have degree k, but your f factor here doesn't. Now you're, you're not guaranteeing that every vertex has the same degree k, but now you specify for each vertex which degree this vertex can have. Right? So this f here is no longer a constant, it will be some function. Right? It will be some function on the vertices, and now you say, oh, for this vertex I want to find some structure where the subgraph has degree 3, this other vertex has degree 5, this other vertex has some other degree. Right? So an f factor is some spanning subgraph, where the degree in this spanning subgraph is exactly the same as the number it was received by this function f. Right. Okay. So I have this picture. Right? Here you're given some host graph. Here we allow some uh, parallel ed edges and loops. And for each vertex, I've given it a number, where this number means I want to look at, I want to find some spanning subgraph where the degree of this vertex in that spanning subgraph is this, is this number here. Right? So here you see this vertex P has degree 3, but it has uh, the S value of this vertex is 2, so it has two thick edges. Uh, same thing here, for this vertex C you have, three, you have degree 3, but you have 2, you've been assigned 2 by this function F. So now I can find some uh, bold edges, some thick edges incident with this vertex C, and the number of incident thick edges is exactly 2. Okay. And now, so the k factor theorem generalizes in this form, right, which is also proved by Tut. Tut says if you, have some, if you have some graph, and if you want to guarantee some f factor, where f is not a constant, but now it's some um, function, it says you have to check all uh, disjoint vertex subsets S and T, and now you want to satisfy uh, this magenta condition instead of this condition up here. Right? But this condition is somewhat resembles the condition up here. It's actually a generalization because the condition up here, k times the size of S, is just, uh, it's just all the S values of the vertices inside F, and so you just add them up. So this value reduces to k times s up here. This value of f of t reduces to k times the size of b up here. Okay? And then the q function here is the same. Right? And the way you sort of prove this is you just use the one-factor theorem up here. Okay? And I'll just do a proof by picture. Right? So here, what I've done is I've started this graph on the left. And on the right, what I've done is, so for each vertex, you have your degree, and you have the, the excess amount, right? So maybe you have only three instant edges, your degree is three, but if the f value says, oh, I want to find a subgraph where you only have two instant edges in this uh, subgraph you're looking for, so there's an excess of one, so I add a single vertex here, right? So every vertex here turns into a complete bipartite graph where one part might be empty. So here it's uh, k23, and that's because here this vertex has degree 3, but you specified a degree of 1, which means you have an excess of 2. So for this excess of 2, you put in two, two new vertices and you make it complete bipartite. Right? 
So, and after a while, the theorem of finding an f factor in this graph turns directly into finding a one factor in this graph, and then you can just apply uh, this one factor theorem by Tut. You just add up all the function values of uh, vertices in this subset S. You just add them all up. Right? Yeah, same thing here and same thing here, right? Yeah. So is that dg minus st made the same notation like adding all the degrees up? Yeah. 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 Adding all the... Yeah. So for each vertex in t, you add up all its degree in this graph, which is uh, g minus s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. But the story doesn't end here because uh, people generalize this further. Uh, oh, before I talk about the generalization. Right? So here, in this theorem, uh, it says this f can just be an arbitrary function and there's no uh, restriction on this f. But this uh, carefully designed uh, Tonkas condition, the necessary and sufficient condition, actually embeds the case when your function has negative value or if the function has a bigger value than your actual degree. Right? So these are actually two impossible cases. Right? You can't find a, uh, an f factor for a vertex if this vertex has less degree or more degree than what your... Uh, yeah, if the f value is bigger than your degree, then you can't find the spanning subgraph. Right? Okay. So these facts are all embedded here, which makes this uh, function restrictor fee free. Right? So there's no restriction on this f. And now, you go on to this thing called the GF factor, where, where now you no longer say for a specific vertex, I prescribe some degree, I want this vertex to have this degree in this spanning subgraph I want to find, now I allow some range, right? But this range, the range I allow will be different from vertex to vertex, which is why I have two functions, right? This function G will always be at most F for a given vertex, and the spanning subgraph I'm looking for, right, this vertex, the degree I want this vertex to have in the spanning subgraph will be lower bounded by G and upper bounded by F. Okay. And then LOVAS, right? so this time LOVAS generalizes uh, Tut's F factor theorem, where it looks almost the same except this uh, Q value here improves from Q to Q star, okay, because in this uh, Q star, you're not counting the number of uh, components where this value is odd, you're counting the value where this value is odd, plus the, it, you're only counting components where this value is odd and when the G and the F are exactly the same for all the vertices in this component. And if, as you can see, the G, GF factor is a generalization of the F factor theorem and the f-factor theorem is the generalization of k-factor, and the k-factor is the generalization of one-factor. And there are lots, lots more of history and literature about the uh, other generalizations of these factors. Yeah, but I won't go into that, I just wanted to introduce these notions, and I wanted to introduce uh, that these necessarily necessary and sufficient conditions uh, exist for the existence of these uh, small structures or spanning structures, okay? Okay, so back to, uh, okay, yeah, and this is the same for the Lovas theorem as well, okay? Yeah. But the, 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 the bad thing about these theorems, all these theorems are nice because you have these unnecessary and sufficient conditions. In theory, you can, you know, you just run through all the vertex disjoint subsets, the to the end choose two subsets, and you just verify this condition in order to find your uh, f-factor or gf-factor, but this only guarantees uh, existence, right? You have to go, after you verify these spanning structures exist, you actually have to go and find them if you want to use them. Right? So this theorem by Peterson, the 130-year-old theorem, right? this says uh, if you have a graph, if, if you restrict yourself to only a three-regular graph, a cubic graph, and if all of your cut edges are on a path, then you have now a one factor. So people tried to generalize this theorem because they wanted to look at some theorem that will be easier to utilize. And one way of generalizing this is 
putting this uh, edge connectivity condition. Right? So, yeah. so Peterson proved if all of your cut edges are on a path, then it's, you have one factor. But in particular, this means if you have no cut edges, if your edge connectivity is at least two, then a three regular graph al always has a one factor. But then there's more done because Plesnik, in his uh, 1974 paper, he actually generalized this for all regularity. He, says, he said that if you are regular and if your edge connectivity is one less, then you have a one factor, but even more. You can actually remove r minus one edges to have a one factor. And the lower bound, or the threshold on the edge connectivity, and the threshold on the number of edges removed, they're both sharp. Right? So this theorem is almost as best possible as you can, as you can possibly want. But this uh, curiosity about edge connectivity still exists. Right? This is only for uh, one factors, after all. Right? So now you want to generalize this to k factors. So this is what people did. So the same uh, Belk and Bolobash, Saito, and Wormud, they claim they independently uh, proved this theorem even though it's 35 years apart. They independently, they characterize all triples of R, T, and K, where if you're R regular and T edge connected, then you have a K factor. Right? So now if you give me three numbers, then I can tell you if, these, uh, if this class of graphs actually has a k factor or not. And then uh, 13 years later, uh, Nissen and Randerath, they, they refined this result by putting in the number of vertices. So now you have uh, a quadruple saying, if you give me the number of vertices, the regularity, the edge connectivity, and the k factor you're looking for, then they can actually tell you in, a moment, in an instance if this, uh, if this class will always have your k factor or not. Okay. So the story is almost, I mean the story is, as you can see, uh, finalized if you look at this uh, Peterson's theorem in terms of uh, edge connectivity. Right? There's almost nothing more you can do. But there's a different way of looking at this uh, Peterson's result. Right? Because instead of saying, instead of uh, increasing the edge connectivity, you can look at the number of uh, cut edges. Right? So Peterson's theorem actually says, well, up here I've written down if it's three regular with no cut edge, then you have a one factor. But because if you have two cut edges, that these two cut edges will, will always be on some path, therefore Peterson has proved that if you're, a cut, if you're a three regular graph with at most two cut edges, then you have a one factor. And now you want to look at the threshold on the number of uh, cut edges as well. And here I have a, I have a two factor, because if you have a one factor, you're three regular, you just remove your perfect matching, what you're left is a two factor. And the reason I've written this like this is because uh, people say, actually Peterson was not really interested in one factors, they say Peterson was actually interested in two factors. Because if you look at this paper by Peterson in 1891, there's this uh, nice result that says that if you're a regular graph, where your regularity is even, then you, you have a two-factor, right? So you can remove this two-factor, and you're still even regular, which means by this theorem, you have a two-factor. So you can repetitively remove these two factors. So this is actually saying that your two-regular graph is uh, two-factorable, right? And the proof of this theorem is uh, kind of cute, yeah. because what you do is you start with your, your uh, graph with even regularity, right? This means that each of your vertices has even degree. And because of uh, Euler, or this uh, thing called Eulerian circuits, because each vertex has an uh, even degree, you can uh, decompose the edge set into one huge uh, Eulerian trail. And then for each vertex, you will have edges going in and edges coming out. So you split this vertex into two vertices, which means now this graph over here will become some uh, bipartite graph. And because this is a bipartite graph with uh, some regularity, because this graph was a 2R regular, this graph over here will be an 
our regular bipartite graph, because it's regular and bipartite. Uh, the theorem on the first slide by uh, Koenig says that you have a perfect matching. And if you just look at what these edges correspond to back in your original graph, it will correspond to these uh, two factors. So I believe this should also be a uh, result proven in uh, first year graph theory. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so Pearson, right, he was actually interested in two factors. So he said if you're a regular graph and if your regularity is even, then you always have a two factor. And you have more because your edge set can be de decomposed into two factors. But he also said if you're odd regular, three regular, three regular, then you also have a two factor. And then this result was also generalized in this viewpoint of uh, cut edges. Right? This, uh, I can't read this, but Babel, uh, this guy, proved that if you're odd regular and if you have no cut edges, then you still have a two factor. This is generalizing uh, Peterson's result. Right? Peterson only proved three, but here they proved the uh, 2r plus one. And then 60 years later, uh, Hansen, Lotten, and Toft they prove the same conclusion. Right? If you are an odd regular graph, you will have a two factor, but then they allow many, many cut edges. Right? Yeah. And then uh, recently, uh, Sasha Kostochka, Andrea Raspo, uh, Toft West, and uh, Zerlin, they actually improved this last result by saying if you are a regular graph and if you have at most some number of cut edges, then you will have a 2k factor, which is actually a better theorem or an improvement on this previous result because of the result up here by Peterson. Because if you can find a 2k factor, you're even regular, therefore you have a 2 factor. Excuse me. And they actually characterize all sharpness examples. They prove that the number of cut edges you have is also sharp, and they prove the the bound on this k is also sharp. Okay. Okay. So now after all these theorems, right, all these theorems just guarantee the existence of some k factor. Some 1 factor, k factor, f factor, gf factor. So now the question is, what happens when you go into these uh, quantification results? What, what happens if you want to quantify the size of your largest so-called k factor? But this sentence of a largest k-factor is incorrect because being a k-factor automatically implies that you're spanning. So you're on all the vertices. Okay. So instead of looking at k-factors, you look at the order of uh, a k-regular subgraph. Right. And now the story of uh, quantification exists. Okay. And this story will be very short. So we'll let alpha of k denote the order of the largest K regular subgraph. Okay. So if you're a graph on n vertices, then you have a one factor, or you have a k factor, if and only if this, uh, this parameter that I've defined is equal to k. Okay. So if you see this new parameter, because we're trying to quantify the size of the largest k regular subgraph, the first thing you do is you investigate this parameter for uh, k equals one. Okay. And this is exactly what Henning and Yo did. And they have these uh, three cases. They say if you're, well, if you're run one regular, then of course uh, alpha of one is just n, the number of vertices. But they say if you're two regular, then you're n minus one. You're only going to miss at most one vertex. But uh, if you exclude these two cases, if you go on for general regularity, for odd regular graphs, then you're missing n minus some number, even though this number also has some n in here. And now if you go into some even regular graphs, then you are missing n minus some small fraction of n. And all of these bounds here are tight. I don't remember if they characterized all the sharpness examples, but for each case they have at least one, one infinite family where it's uh, always sharp. Right? So our question of uh, looking into three regular graphs, right? It, this says uh, alpha of one is approximately eight over nine n. Right? So if you give me a three regular graph, 
and I can give you a one factor or a one regular subgraph where it contains almost all vertices except one ninth of the vertices. So now the story naturally goes into what happens when uh, you fix r equals one and instead of looking at one factors now you look at two factors or two regular subgraphs. Right. And this is our uh, first corollary. Right? Uh, we prove that if you're three regular then we prove something like this uh, henning yell result. We prove that you have almost all the vertices, except maybe uh, six o uh, n over 6. So if you have approximately, uh, you're guaranteed to have five, 5 n over 6 vertices. But actually, in vain of the number of cut edges, we have this uh, result that says if you're 3 regular, and if you know that you have exactly C cut edges, then instead of missing 6 over n, ver uh, n over 6 vertices, you'll be missing uh, c over 2 vertices. Right? So the number of cut edges is actually an important uh, parameter when you're trying to look into uh, large two regular subgraphs. And the reason I state that these are corollaries is that we prove something much, much stronger. Or maybe I should just say slightly stronger. Because we now incorporate this uh, concept of uh, deficiency. Remember, for the one-factor theorem and uh, k-factor theorem, f-factor, gf-factor theorem, you have this uh, necessary, necessary and sufficient condition. And you want to figure out, uh, you want to have these uh, quantification results. And all these quantification results said that you have n minus some number, where this number depends on some bad subset. So the way we measure this deficiency now is that we say we, our goal is to prove this for uh, cubic graphs. As you can see from the corollaries here, we want to prove it for three regular graphs. But we, instead of looking at the problem in view of a three regular graphs, we look at it into a maximum degree three graphs. Right? And we measure how far away this maximum degree three graph is from being three regular. And this is exactly uh, this quantity here. It's basically just saying, you look at each vertex, this is just a degree sum. Right? So you, from the degree sum, that should be, right? if you're 2r plus 1 regular, then your degree sum is this number times n. But then you subtract twice the number of edges, which is the actual degree sum. Right? So you're counting how many degrees you're missing from being uh, two, 2r plus 1 regular. So now we have this uh, concept of uh, deficiency, and now we have we quantified the number of edges, the number of cut edges, and now we can guarantee that if you are a graph with uh, maximum degree at most three, so you're subcubic, and if your deficiency is d, and if you have c cut edges, then you're guaranteed to have almost all of the vertices in your maximum two regular subgraph, except maybe this uh, small amount, where this small amount actually depends on your deficiency and the number of cut edges. Okay. So this is our main result. So I'll briefly talk about this, uh, this result. So if you look here, we actually characterize all sharpness examples. So I'll just show a couple examples first. Okay. So the first class of uh, sharpness examples is uh, trees. Right? Because trees, every edge is a cut edge. So you have n minus 1 cut edges. And your deficiency is n plus 2. Because if you have n vertices, you should be, the, de the degree sum should be 3 times n. But you know exactly the degree sum of your vertices because you're a tree. So c is n minus 1, your deficiency is n plus 2. And because you're a tree, you have no two regular subgraph, right? because every edge is a cut edge. And d plus c minus 1 is, is what? It's just uh, 2n over 2, yeah. so it's n minus n, which is 0, right? So this uh, quantity, so you're not guaranteed a two regular subgraph. And then we also define this thing called uh, balloons, which is basically a uh, three regular graph, and you just subdivide one edge. Okay. And this three regular graph, you subdivide the edge, must be uh, two edge connected, so you have no cut edge. Okay. And because 
this uh, three regular graph is two edge connected. It has no cut edges. From the result by Peterson, it has a two factor. And it still has a two regular subgraph on all the vertices, even if you subdivide one edge. So this means cut edge is 0, deficiency is 1, and you have a 2 factor. So if you plug in these numbers here, then you're subtracting nothing from 0. Right? So the way you interpret these two examples is you say, you look at the case where you have the maximum number of cut edges, and you look at the case where you have no cut edges, and then you have to look at something in between. Right? And this in between is exactly the case where you look at a cubic bipartite graph, or actually a multi-graph, and you just uh, subtract one vertex. And you can, because it's a bipartite graph, if you want to have a two-factor, you simply can't have a two-factor because every cycle eats up the same number of vertices on the left and the right. So from these, uh, in some sense, prime graphs, we can actually characterize all of the sharpness examples. Right? So the sharpness examples actually look like this. It says, if you're connected, this equality will hold if and only if you have all these cut edges, so you just delete all of them at once, and you look at each component. If each component is a single vertex, which kind of corresponds to this tree down here, or if it's a balloon, which is actually just the same thing here, or if it's a graph in this F, which will correspond to this uh, cubic bipartite graph. And the way graphs in this F is uh, constructed is that you start from this uh, prime graph here. You have this uh, cubic bipart bipartite graph. And then you remove this vertex, which is this class down here. And now you just, as a disjoint union, you have another uh, cubic, cubic graph with no, with no cut edges. And what you do here is you pick a vertex on the left, and you pick a vertex on the right in this graph F, and you remove these two vertices, and you, I'll say, you put in a matching between the two neighborhoods. But it's not actually a matching because we allow these uh, multigraphs. Right? So we add three edges, so the vertices that are missing degrees are now not missing degrees. And now you get this, uh, this graph here. So these are all the sharpness examples of this, uh, of this theorem. Okay. So I was going to do a proof if I have time, but I guess I don't. So this is one of those things where after you figure out which induction to do and how to do the induction, the proof becomes very simple. And it's actually also one of those cases where the base case is much harder than the induction step. So I'll skip the base case. And the induction step is just, if you have some cut edge in the middle, you have a left edge and a, uh, you have the left part and a right part. And since we're looking into uh, two factors or two regular subgraphs, this edge in the middle can't be part of this two regular subgraph because it's a cut edge. So now we, we use induction on the left graph and the right graph. So if the number of cut edges in total will be the number of cut edges on the left, the num number of cut edges on the right, plus this uh, one special cut edge. So C is C1 plus C2 plus 1. And now we look at the deficiency. So the deficiency will be the deficiency on the left, plus the deficiency on the right, minus 2. Because this edge is now missing, this deficiency will be counted one more on the left and one more on the right. And the two regular subgraph, the maximum, the largest two regular subgraph of this graph will be the largest two regular subgraph on the left and the disjoint union of the largest regular subgraph on the right. And you just put them side by side. And by this uh, clever induction, this subgraph will be missing uh, this many vertices and if you do this addition, it just simply works out. Okay. Okay. So what's left to be done? Uh, what's left to be done is, remember we started from this uh, henning yaw theorem where you can quantify how large your one regular subgraph is. And our result is this saying, well, if you're in the subcubic case, if you're in the three regular case, we know 
uh, how large of a two regular subgraph that's guaranteed. And not only that, we characterize all sharpness examples. So a natural question is try to uh, work, go further, right? try to do it for five regular graphs and seven regular graphs, because for even regular graphs, it's all taken care of. But actually, we ask a question saying that we want to generalize this theorem from the beginning by just saying, instead of subcubic, your, oh, this is also incorrect, instead of 2r plus 1 regular, I want to say 2r plus 1, uh, the maximum degree is at most 2r plus 1. And your deficiency is d, and you have this cut edges, then maybe the number of the order of the largest two factor is n minus the same thing here, but instead of 2, now you have a 2r. And in some sense, this is natural, because if you go back here, the, these uh, prime graphs, right? Before we characterized every single tightness example, we had some simple classes of uh, graphs where we knew equality held. The first and the second class, the trees and the balloons, they will all hold for uh, these graphs as well. Right? I mean, they will all hold for higher regularity as well. Right? So maybe if, if you find something in the middle, like we found these uh, these uh, cubic bipartite graphs missing a vertex, if you find something nice, then maybe you will be able to characterize uh, everything here. And then, of course, uh, as I just said, in particular, if you plug in uh, d sec 0 and no cut edges, and r equals 2, this should uh, boil down to 21 over 22. So uh, this is the end of the talk. Yeah, thank you. And uh, this is uh, Peterson, and this is uh, Tut.